We're gonna, we're, I'm, I'm gonna do the handyman story okay. first. Okay. Awesome. So just tell it to me like. Okay. So my name is Mickey Kendall. Um, this is for Patreon subscribers and other folks who have maybe heard this story before, read this story. Once upon a time, no, not once upon a time. Um, I live on the south side of Chicago and I live in a neighborhood that has approximately 400 families in one block. So a lot of my crazy stories sound like, oh my God, how much stuff can happen on one block? But high rises, multiple unit courtyard apartments. What are you, what are you gonna get? So last year, oh my God, it was last year. Uh, <laughs> I hear some, some dramatic yelling outside and horn blowing um, outside my apartment. And because I am nosy, I got up, I went, I looked out the window and what followed was like a hood soap opera. Come on, it's fine. You're going to love it. So picture this car, two women, and they are ringing the bell, honking the horn and yelling fit to beat the band outside this house. Eventually, a guy appears from the house. You think at first it is his house, and then you realize that no, this guy, this is his girlfriend who has now caught him with her car at his side broad's house, basically. He's at the side's house. He is doing all the wrong things. And she is not okay with the fact that he has a side broad, apparently. And her friend is there. And this is, this is a good drama. This is a fun drama to watch. Nobody is getting shot. Everybody is yelling. It is a warm day. Why not? Except then another car pulls up. Guy gets out. This is where things start to go left. Because the guy that gets out of the car, that is his house. That is apparently his wife. She has been sleeping with that chick from the car's man behind everybody's back. This is not good. This is not so good. There is some punching. The little dude who was, who was driving his girlfriend's car to see his side chick gets punched in the mouth. He's punched in the mouth really hard. Really hard. By this point, everybody's watching the show. Our building handyman has come out. He is having a moment. He is roasting this kid for being this dumb because if you drove her car to that broad's house, you've already written this check. And then somewhere in the middle of this drama, you start to figure out that the wife does not want the side dude, at least not enough to abandon her husband. In fact, what she would really like is to be forgiven. So they're having that conversation. Side dude is on the ground holding his face. That's, that's unfortunate. Girlfriend has gotten in her car and has taken her car. Her friend has followed with, with the other car. There's a lot happening. Right? This is all unfortunate. He is really just sitting outside, crying, holding his face. I still almost feel sorry for him. Almost. Almost. However, the handyman, very hopefully, his name is Ernest. I feel like a handyman <laughs> named Ernest are going to sound like this. Goes over to ask him, does he have somewhere else he can be? Because he's just sitting on a curb looking pitiful, and man, this is terrible. He has no phone, he has no car, he has no wallet, because these things are either in the house with the dude that just punched him, or in the car the girlfriend just drove off with. None of the things that you need in a moment like this are present. So he asks to use Ernest's phone. Ernest is helpful. He does not agree to hand this kid his phone. He does agree to dial this boy's number before this boy for him. But he tells him not to call any women unless, it's, unless he's calling his mama because he has enough women problems right now. This is good advice. This is good advice. He calls mom. <sighs> Ernest helpfully takes the phone from him to explain to his mama that he is outside on a curb crying and bleeding because he was sleeping with somebody else's wife. Well, actually, I think he said he was poaching another man's fish. Or, I'm just very confused. Ernest is very country. Poaching another man's chickens. I don't know. It was something. And his mother starts yelling at him. Very loud, very dramatic. I done told you what's wrong with you, and blah, blah, blah. And there's, there's a lot happening, right, on this phone call. Like you were getting cussed out Charlie Brown style with your swollen lip. And you are not totally dressed through this whole conversation. You've got on like 
It's a long boxers kind of a situation, but no shirt, really. Like, it's just not good. It's just not good. Nothing good can happen here. Then the girlfriend comes back with her car and his stuff and her friend. Drives up, gives him his stuff. They do give him his stuff. All of it is packed, however, which makes me question exactly how long this has been going on and what she knew when she knew it. Because everything is tidily in bags, right? His stuff just rained down on him. I'm not sure the phone is still intact. I think she might have bought the phone. I'm a little, a little unclear. It looked like the phone looked like it came in two pieces. Since I don't know of any phone brands that come in two pieces. You all can tell me. Then she and the girlfriend head back to the house with the guy and his wife, who has been, I assume, apologizing through the course of all of this. Houston. Houston. We have a problem. Because while he is waiting to be picked up, this very dramatic rendition of, of a, a Greek tragedy is playing out on the porch again. The girlfriend is apologizing to the woman. The guy is standing in the doorway and he has got his full happening. And I am starting to realize that her friend has also come up on this porch. Listen. Listen. Sometimes things are a setup. This, this is one of those times where things are definitely a setup. Because while they're having their dramatic rendition, that boy's uncle or somebody has come to get him. They have put him and his, his bloody lip and his swollen ass face in the car with his things. There has been a conversation with Ernest about how that boy's stupid and his mama know he's stupid. And apparently he can't drive her car either, so he better figure out how he's going to get to work and some other things. Like, there's a lot happening in his life that has gone wrong. He is out of the picture, though. These women are talking. Apparently they all know each other. These two were friends, and you're sleeping with her man and checking on your her husband. And the husband's best friend is her best friend. You're all on the porch together. Hmm. Hold on. Your husband has closed the door, helpfully. You are not on the right side of that door. You are on the porch side with the two women. You are not in the house safe. And, and he punched him. Now, he didn't beat him up, really. He only hit him one real good time. But since he busted his face for one real good time, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess he could fight. And the little boy couldn't. Can you fight, baby? You cannot fight. You know how I know you can't fight? Because you are getting beat up. You are getting beat up by two women who are beating you like they are your mother. Don't you ever in your life do something like this to me again. Like that beating wasn't exactly what was said. There's a lot of profanity. They called her some names. They were very clear that she should never, ever, ever, ever again. I am looking out the window by this point, asking some hard questions about her choices in life because you just got jumped. For a dude you didn't want. What the hell? And then her husband opened the door. He threw all her stuff out. Because apparently we're done. And that was his house. Her, her stuff. Everything's getting off the porch. Very fast. And then another car comes up. That car, I don't know if they called it Uber, or this is somebody they knew, what. But she and her stuff were all loaded into the car. The car takes her away. I'm a little confused, frankly, about how quickly and cleanly this has all been executed. And then the two women, they go back up the stairs to my neighbor's house to talk to him. And there's some hugging. And he's got handfuls of butt. So I don't know if this was originally Polly. If everybody was cheating. I don't know what was happening. I've never asked. I still see them. I still literally see him, the two women, they came out later. They barbecued a few hours later. Like, they're, they're having a great time. Very pleasant. I don't see the little dude that got beat up or the woman that got thrown out. That's a day on my block. How was that?